Green has, has grown a little bit. Okay. It's fluffed up a bit. Right, right. Um, but it uh, it does it grows about 25 percent weight in the water. Amazing! That's awesome. This is the part where you see brewers earn their living. <laughs> they don't like doing this, but hard brewing, and you gotta do some hard work. And hard work involves digging up the mash tun. Now, most of the time, if you're smart, you'll find some unsuspecting fool who likes beer, likes the concept of making beer, is really excited about it, and you make them dig up the mash. That'd be you. <laughs> I was offering. <laughs> <laughs> but for the purpose of actually filming, I will let a man knows how to film properly, and I will do the hard work. This isn't really hard work. You can see the grain is really quite hot, seen from the steam. Yeah, yeah. So it went in there at about roughly 65 to 70 degrees Celsius. Probably go 40 degrees Celsius here. It's quite warm. You can see how it's a great environment for growing it. Yeah, um, yeah. Mushrooms are, you know, anything. It's really fantastic. It's totally spent, like, all the goodness that we wanted as brewers is out of it. Yeah, but it's still got quite a bit. I can smell it's really rich. Yeah, it's very rich. Everyone thinks they can make bread out of this. Yeah, that was my first thought. Is like, why can't you make this into cupcakes or something? Yeah. Sadly, it doesn't work that way. However, like I said, um, you've got yourself a pig, he'll go through that in like three minutes. We should get you a pig. I need a pig. Yeah, a pig. <laughs> a pig or a goat. One of the two. <laughs> I'll have to talk to Mr. Gregerson about that. See if he's all fine with pigs in the uh, city. Yeah, they shouldn't have just build smaller pigs, right? better to feed them this than what they feed them out in Coquitlam anyway. This is true. This is... <laughs> better to feed them this than people. <laughs> well, this is perfectly good grains. Um, two row, like I said, um, the black malt in there. This is good stuff. This is what uh, everyone should be learning to deal with, as opposed to uh, and reconfigure the web page. Yeah. The amazing thing is how much this will actually hold its uh, temperature. Um, I've, whoa, it's still really hot. It's um, burning my hands as I'm doing this. Right. As you, uh, you can actually put this stuff into barrels and. It will sit there for two or three days, keeping a very high temperature. Which is like, uh, <laughs> yeah, that's hot. Fantastic. I mean, it's great insulation for temporary structures. But if you think about what, uh, you know, the farm can be in terms of mushrooms or Things like that you want to grow? Perfect. So the brewer works with a mushroom farmer or any kind of farmer and gives them this stuff. What happens is that the brewer gets rid of this stuff which they don't want because they have to get it out of here and they don't want to pay for someone to take it away. And you have the uh, farmer who wants some grain, doesn't want to pay for it. They take it away, feed it to the pigs. 
soon after the uh, pigs provide meat for the uh, brewer and the farmer. And at the end of the day, everybody's drunk. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Is that a bad thing? No, that's awesome. That's right, perfect. Okay. That's a great thing. So. I think everyone's going to get into this concept of basically fending for themselves, I suppose is the uh, big term. You know, this isn't hard, this isn't easy, you know, it's not uh, very difficult. In, in Chinese culture they call it qigong, or, or work energy, right? Qigong? Qigong, it means work energy. Yeah. Gung ho means work together. And, uh, and then I think in another culture they say the sleep of a laboring man is sweet. So, I think it's better to probably do this than go and buy a case, open it up and get shit-faced and beat your wife. For, yeah, well, I mean, it's, it's all about just doing things for yourself. Um, and everyone sort of looks at it as a little, you know, all this trouble, I've got to take time out of my day to do it, and it's insane. Well, it's not that much trouble, it's not that hard. Um, at the end of the day, it, it saves me a couple of money, but I mean, really the joy is being uh, able to do something for yourself. Um, and have the knowledge how to do it by yourself. Mm -hmm. uh, and you're a brewer, and that's what you do. So that's, yeah, that's uh, what I do. And gives I you an identity, and uh, I love it very much. I love the process. I think it's a, a magic come to life. Yeah. But uh, to be able to learn how to do something yourself and fend for yourself, I think that's a more important uh, issue. Yeah. Beautiful. Okay. So what do we got to do next? We got some. Splugey down there. Yeah, I got some splugey down there. That means I got to rinse that with some water, and uh, uh, it means I have to go out in the rain. So, I'll wash my hands. I'm gonna... So there's our cleanup, and we're boiling over here. So I think there's a little stir that's going to happen, and it's warm got soaked out there in the rain. Malting away. And you're dry. No. Well, <laughs> you know you're dry, wet. <laughs> Sorry about hitting you with a hose there. Yeah, it's all good. Now, we got about probably this point I'd say about uh, 18 kilos. Now, sad thing is that that could be used for, um, well, making mushrooms, composting, whatever. And I gotta throw in the garbage. Feeding chickens. We're gonna have to find those uh, chickens since they found us. Some very hungry chickens. While he does that, I'll go clean out his bucket. Ah. Chris just packed out his uh, grains and I'm just doing a cleanup. And we were joking about how important the dirty work is after the job, so. Uh, one of the, I think the most important things about brewing is uh, how clean and sterile your product is. 